Welcome to Season 7 of Focal Point. On today's episode of Focal Point, you will find out more about the Benjamins, Jacksons, and Washingtons. No, today we are not going to talk about dead presidents, but about Kaching money. We talk about students, about their finances, financial resolutions, how our veterans afford their education, and learn what the Selective Service has to do with FAFSA. Stay with us. Hello, I'm Andreas Copes. And I'm Bethany Ann. Welcome to Focal Point, the magazine show about the Community College of Philadelphia on CCP-TV, the Emmy Award-winning educational channel at the Community College of Philadelphia. Money. Now, that's a tough topic, especially for our students. Many students here at the college are working not only to finance our education, but also to stay alive. What about you? Do you work, Andreas? Yes, I do. I am an <laughs> English tutor here at the college. What about you? I saw that you are having a music career, right? Yes, I've been singing for quite some time and things are really beginning to kick off for me. People are starting to support me by streaming my music and I'm even getting booked for shows now. It's, it's a lot of hard work and it's really good to see it paying off. But let me tell you, Andreas, this is just the beginning. I'm really happy to see that and I can't wait to follow you becoming, as Michelle Obama would probably <laughs> say. And when you make those big dollars, you want to find an institution where you can actually save your money, where you can put your money into. Um, right, Bethany? I see where this is going, Andreas. You're talking about our first segment for today, about the credit union here at the college. That's right. You can find it on the main campus here at CCP in the Bonnell building. Let's see what our first team found out about them. Hey, you look pretty down in the dumps. What's got you so upset? Money trouble? I'm sorry to hear. Well, what if I told you that here at CCP, we have a solution just for you? Yes, you. What if I told you that all your financial problems could be solved in just a matter of minutes? Does that sound interesting to you? It does? Well, all right, then follow me. Here at PACCU, um, I work at the Financial Education Center, and what that means is that I get to spend part of my day working with students. Um, I get to teach them about everything from budgeting to building credit for the first time, and then helping them sort of plan out their financial goals and how they're going to meet them. We put $5 into your account to get you started up and going, so that can lock you in as a member if you're a CCP student. There are no minimum balances, no annual fees, no inactivity penalty fees, ways for you to earn cash back from uh, our ATM rebate program, which allows you to get $20 back into your account from out-of-network ATM surcharge fees with direct deposit. CCP's Opportunity for a Credit Union on campus helps you and other students with all of their financial troubles. Sometimes we have different run-ins or experiences with different types of financial institutions, but I find that when students start with a not-for-profit, they have a chance to get a free checking, get a free savings, but also come to a place that's worried about their well-being. So when they have concerns, when they have questions, they can get true and honest answers. They can get something that helps illuminate the path that they're trying to walk down rather than just sort of confuse them and like make things a little bit harder to understand. It's a credit union, but what does that mean? What do they do? What we do is offer uh, help build accessibility for people to have a free checking, free savings account, and um, to open up opportunity if they didn't have an account already before and see how they can manage their finances with the account. It's very important to know uh, budgeting your money, know that you're not overspending, and know that uh, the track that you can build to save up more money and uh, to utilize the best tools possible for you to do that. That's so interesting. I want to check out the credit union and see what they've got for me. You know what is interesting, Andreas? Today it seems like we are using this little piece of plastic more than the Benjamins to pay for things. I know, right? <laughs> it's really, I rarely carry cash on me and pay with my credit card. 
And with newer technology, we can even pay with our phones at the, at the register. And I can check my balance 24-7, but that can be dangerous as well because you can lose the overview, the general overview of your, over your savings account. According to NerdWallet, the total amount of credit card debt in 2019 in the U.S. is, hold on to that, Bethany, $444 billion. Oh dear, all the stuff I could do with that money, I'd be able to pay for my education, for your education, and for your education. Like, out of pocket. Oh, what a dream that would be. <laughs> Many people, though, they aren't aware of all the financial resources they can get here at the college. First, there is FAFSA, the free application for student, student, federal student aid. You can and should apply online at studentaid.gov and fill out the forms. It is relatively self-explanatory, but it will also take some time. Um, also, make sure to check out the deadlines for each year. I always like to take pictures and mark the deadlines on my calendar. There are a bunch of scholarships out there. Andreas, I heard you are kind of an expert on that, right? Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say that I'm an expert, but yeah, I definitely benefited from the scholarships here in the past. For more information on how to apply for scholarships, go to My CCP and then find the scholarship part under the rubric student. When you apply, make sure that you talk to a professor or someone that can talk to your academic success, as you will need a letter of recommendation. And make sure to review those scholarship essays again and again and again. Andreas, I think we should see how other students here at CCP manage to pay for their education and personal life. We sent our team to the main campus to find out. Sure. My name is Parsa Kiani, spelled as P-A-R-S-A-K-I-A-N-I. -A -A -I. My name is Joey Simmons. Most people just call me Mugga. Well, you know, college was always something that I had uh, wanted to do. Like, you know, I didn't really apply myself the way I should have in high school and middle school, but uh, college was always on my checklist. It's just something that I always felt like I needed to do. Education is one of the most important things that we need more than ever. There is like, there is no doubt on it that we, everybody as a human being should you know, invest in education instead of doing like some sort of bad things that you're suffering from today. So I think uh, it's necessary to do education at this point of my life, at, at least because I'm still young and uh, it just gives me this motivation to do better in the future. If financial aid doesn't cover it, but majority financial aid does cover it, and I also get Pell Grants too, and I pretty much try to apply for every scholarship possible that I can apply for to get extra money. So the thing is that I'm a part-time cashier at Whole Foods right now. So I try to do my best to, you know, help myself as much as possible, not to, you know, bargain money from my father or my mother as much as I can. But uh, I have a support uh, from my father mainly. He, you know, pays um, for my education. And uh, it's actually good because uh, I just put my focus on things like that in my education rather than doing some sort of unnecessary things and again as a matter of fact I just want to do my own things I just on my own feet but his help is very you know beneficial to me. I was on like a um, like I, I was uh, using FAFSA able to pay out of pocket. I would just take the train every day I mean yeah that's a pain in itself. If I was to go back I'd probably go to Temple like I, I live in the area right now so I feel like that would probably be the most convenient you know I hear that like Temple's pretty easy to get into. Lord knows I need that. <laughs> no Ivy Leagues here. Some of it is, um, to me, well, it's self-explanatory, um, but, you know, so to some people it might be harder or difficult. But I think the renewal process is much easier because uh, once you already filed it and you just keep renewing, it's obviously, it's the same information if nothing's changed. So to me, that's more easier because I could just click, 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 and nothing ain't changed. So CCP was kind of something that I was looking into. And, I, you know, it's, it's, it's half of the what, what, you're, what I've been paying at Temple or Drexel. They pay over $100,000. i am not trying to have no $100,000 in debt by the time I graduate. But again, uh, I just want to say CCP, but for the starting point, it was one of the best you know, starting points ever. Education in the United States is certainly not cheap. In a recent conversation with Marty Moscoin on WHYY's Radio Times, Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney made the case for no tuition for community colleges. Plans on how to afford this remain unknown. We asked our viewers on Instagram what they want to know about financing and their education. Viewer John from Philadelphia asked a question that many of you might think about as well. Why is education so expensive? 
Bethany? That's actually a good question. And yes, I've been asking myself the same thing. I found some good articles about it on the Atlantic and Business Insider, and they suggest that more and more Americans are going to college today, and with that, the costs are rising. Why? Because more professors need to be hired, and colleges have to expand. The Atlantic article said that the cost for staff and faculty add up to about $23,000 per student per year. In the current political debate, financing education and paying off student debt became an important topic. Let's see where this will go, and make sure you go register to vote for the 2020 presidential election in November. Absolutely. We now want to dedicate the second part of the show to a special group of Americans, all the people that serve or served in the U.S. military. Here at CCP, we have a lot of student veterans. Remember, Bethany, in our last class together, we had like one or two students who actually served or serve in the military. Yes, Andreas. You know, I actually do remember. Um, thank you so much for your service, guys. And thank you, Smitty. He also says that CCP makes it easy to get the most out of the GI Bill and other veteran benefits. I bet it is not easy to have such an important job and go to school. How do they cope with that? Let's check in with our crew in the next segment about veterans and how they finance their education. My name is Steve Beethoven. Sounds like Beethoven. Um, and my role here at the uh, Veterans Resource Center is to help support uh, our student veteran population, reservists, National Guard members, and their dependents on uh, their education benefits uh, here at Community College. Uh, my name is Keith Strother. I was a veteran in the Army. My name is Jordan Lawrence. I'm a former vet, Navy. When I first came here, I was a bit confused of how to use my resources until I was told about this office. And they helped me step by step through uh, applying for which classes and which classes apply to which degree. And pretty much they were there step by step. Basically, they were the first people uh, that I was able to talk to uh, in regards to coming to CCP and they walked me through the entire process of uh, all the paperwork that needed to be done, financial aid. When it comes to helping our student veterans with the finance end of it and the affordability of college, we try to point out as many resources as we can uh, that are available to our veteran population to help cover the costs that aren't always covered through the uh, VA and the military. Well, they show me the tools in which shows whether or not everything's covered or not. Like, uh, there's a certain tool that shows which colleges are 100%. They also show me how to apply for the classes. So I didn't have to keep coming back to the office and thus save time. I could apply for my classes online, at home. The purpose that we open this center is to show our support and to advocate for our student veterans here on campus. Uh, a lot of times, uh, first-time student veterans, when they're going to school, uh, need some support and more information that's available to them um, in order to access their education benefits. So the way I'm paying for school is through the VOC Rehab Program, and what they did at the uh, Veterans Resource Center is uh, walked me through the process to make sure all the paperwork was done between the school and the VA so that basically everything is paid for. He walked me through uh, me being able to buy my books at the bookstore. I've had a wonderful experience with them. Uh, not only were they kind and helpful, but uh, when I made errors, they, they were there for me, step by step in fixing those errors. Wow, that seems really helpful. Say, Andreas, have you filled out your FAFSA application? Yes, I did. <laughs> Why are you asking? Okay, so do you remember the part about the selective service clause that you had to fill out? I actually, I do remember that because in order to receive financial aid, it is required that you register with selective service. Some people may know it as the draft. A draft means that you are available to serve in the military in a case of war, but we have to say that it is really unlikely that we actually have to draft people. Wow. You know, that actually gets me thinking. You know, let's just dive right into our next segment because our team went out and found some great insights into the fine print of the FAFSA application. Hello. 
My name is Debbie Rowe. I'm here at Community College of Philadelphia's main campus in front of enrollment. Did you know that the U.S. government uses FAFSA, which stands for Financial Assistance for Student Federal Aid, as a camouflage to track men ages 18 through 25 who have not signed up for the draft? Let's talk more about that with Steve Bechoven in the Veterans Office. Hi, my name is Steve Bechoven. I'm the Veterans Resource Coordinator here at Community College of Philadelphia. Yeah, not too many people realize that there's still uh, the Selected Service Law that requires all males after the age of 18 to register uh, with the federal government. The Selected Service is the government's way of tracking all military-aged men. That's in case of a national emergency, most likely a war. I feel like the whole concept of getting an education and being just being drafted, I'm a little in the middle because, I mean, it does benefit, benefit our country in a way, but at the same time, war breaks out and you're the first ones to go. On one end, you're fighting for freedom and all that, and on the other hand, you're, you know, pretty much giving up your life in a way for education. There is a uh, law in the books stating that it could be a felony offense for not applying for a uh, selected service. Current events show that war is at the brink of war, and I feel like that might take you back. You might not want to do that because you might be drafted. There is no active draft going on, although if in the future it does come into effect where the nation has a national emergency where they need to call up a young men, there could be a felony penalty for that. I'm not fighting for this country, so they're going to have to do what they have to do. I'm not going into a war. I don't think that it's right. I mean, um, more times than not, um, when you're that age, you're not in tune with reading the fine print. All the federal uh, agencies uh, check FAFSA through the Department of Education and Selected Service. You didn't register with Selected Service, dear? No. You're between 18 and 25. You have to say yes because you can't get financial aid unless you have. Oh. Yeah. So you said no, that you weren't registered, and then they're going to register you. I think it's every American civic duty to participate in their, uh, you know, or, or to contribute to their society. According to CNBC, the ties of FAFSA and the military go back to the GI Bill of 1944 under President Franklin D. Roosevelt. The fund provided American veterans to go to college and trade school. FDR was trying to make sure that American servicemen could catch up with their education, the education they have missed during World War II. So, Bethany, let's sum up what we have learned today. <laughs> okay, so pretty much everything is super expensive, and we are stuck in this weird uh, money machine. Yeah, that too, but what else? <laughs> Today we talked about money, how we students make money and how we spend it, how expensive our education is, um, how we got there, and finally how a special group of Americans is dealing with everything differently than you and I. We hope you learned as much as we did today on the show, but most of all, we hope you enjoyed it. Right. Make sure that you check out our videos on YouTube and Facebook and follow us on Instagram at ccptv53. That's all the time we have for today. You have been watching Focal Point, the magazine show about the Community College of Philadelphia on CCP TV, the Emmy Award winning educational channel at the Community College of Philadelphia. All the segments have been produced entirely by students in the digital video production curriculum here at the college. I'm Bethany Ann. And I'm Andreas Copes. See you next time.